Hi guys, I'm Lauren Vitale and on this episode of Lauren the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make an American classic, a really delicious, old-fashioned, amazing meatloaf. And before you go running away, because I know a lot of people think meatloaf dry, tastes like a slipper and no one wants to go anywhere near it, trust me when I tell you this recipe wins everybody over and it's incredibly easy to make. Now let me show you what you're going to need so we can get started. You'll need some ground beef, and I'll talk about this in a minute. Some finely chopped onion and garlic, a soft roll, freshly grated parmigiano, some milk, eggs, some chopped parsley, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper, and for the glaze, you'll need some good old American ketchup, some brown sugar, granulated onion, some dried mustard, granulated garlic, paprika, and some um, tomato paste. That's it, just a little bit of olive oil, which is exactly what we're going to start with, is the olive oil that's in this little tiny pan. I've got about a, a tablespoon of olive oil in there, and I'm going to add my onion and garlic. Not to terribly hot yet, I don't want this to really develop any color. I mean, it can, but the point of this is to sweat the veggies so that the onion isn't, like, you know, big chunks throughout the meatloaf. I want to cook it out first piece of garlic. Alright, while that's happening, get your oven preheated to 350. Once that's ready, and you've got everything prepped, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now for the beef, I like using all sirloin. Sirloin is very lean kind of meat, so if you were using chuck for this, I think it's way too greasy and just too much fat runs out and I don't get that sort of delicious, you know, moist meatloaf. It's just really heavy and dense and greasy. So I always ask my butcher to ground me up some sirloin. He's happy to do it. If you can't find, you know, if your butcher doesn't do that and you go to a supermarket and you buy the packaged ground beef, just make sure you find one that's 85 to 15. 85 percent lean and 15 percent fat. That'll work just fine. But I do suggest asking your butcher. If he refuses to, then you might want to tell him that you're going to go look for a new butcher because, you know, you should be able to do that. All right, I'm going to just add a little tiny bit of um, salt to my onion. That just allows them to sweat a little bit faster. All right, now let's work on the next step. We're going to take this uh, roll. This is a really soft roll. Um, you could use a couple slices of like sandwich bread, you know. You can use a few slices of that, about three to four slices, and it'll do the job just fine. But today we're going to just use a nice soft roll. Just going to cut it into pieces in this bowl. That's good. You just looking to break those up into small pieces. Now you're going to pour your milk right over it. This sounds odd and you could just use regular breadcrumbs, but I tell you what, this right here is what makes the meatloaf moist and tender and delicious. I feel like dried breadcrumbs compact it too much, making it too tough. So this is a really good sort of easy step you can do that really adds a lot of character and delicious deliciousness to your meatloaf. I'm just making sure that they're all submerged or covered in milk. And I'm just going to let these let this sit aside for a few minutes so that it can get nice and soft and delicious. And I do the same thing with my like Italian meatballs napoletane because my grandmom does the same thing. She puts a little bit of milk and then it really helps tenderize the meat. So if she does it, you know I'm doing it. So set that aside. I'm just going to watch my onion and garlic, wait for that to get come to the right consistency or texture. That should be a few more minutes and then we'll be ready to put the whole thing together. My onion and garlic for cooked for about seven minutes. You're just looking for them to be translucent and then softened so that they don't have that raw sort of garlic and onion bite. So those are cooling for just a few minutes. So let's get kind of into everything else, shall we? In this big bowl, got a little crumb from the bread. I'm going to put in my milk soaked bread, which as you can tell it soaked it all up beautifully and it's super soft. I'm just going to mash it a little bit with my spatula. That's fine enough. Now the idea here is to mix everything together before you add the meat so that you're working the meat for as little as possible so that you don't compact it too much and work it too much because again, who wants a tough and dry meatloaf? That's the whole point. That's why people don't like meatloaf. So. That definitely helps keep it nice and moist. Crack up your eggs, put them right in here. Then I've got a good amount of some chopped fresh flat leaf parsley, about a quarter cup. This is a really sort of basic recipe. I make meatloaves in a thousand different ways, but this is really the classic. My husband absolutely loves it, and I don't think he likes anything more than just the next day when it's leftover meatloaf, a sandwich. He, he, he digs that. 
All right, so some parmigiano, eggs, parsley, the bread soaked in milk, a dash of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, however you pronounce it. You say potato, I say potato. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna mount black pepper. I like black pepper. And some salt. Alrighty, I'm actually just gonna switch to my fork to combine all of this together. And then I'm gonna add in my onion mush. This is gonna have a ton, a ton, a ton of flavor. So, and that's the goal here, is to give the meatloaf good flavor. So get it all made. At this point, you can mix until your heart drops, or whatever, you, whatever the saying is, because you're not going to overwork anything. So, time to add in your beef. I'm gonna start it with my fork, and then I'm gonna switch to my hands. You know what? I'm over the fork. That's been, what, 2.5 seconds? All right, but before we do that, you wanna make sure you have a baking sheet with some sort of rack on top of it. This is just a broiler pan, so you see all the fat can drain, and that way your meat loaf isn't sitting in its own sort of drippings, which I don't like. If you don't have a broiler pan, you can always take a baking sheet, like a plain old baking sheet, and put a cooling rack on top of it, and it serves the same purpose. Do there you go. So, mix your meat loaf well. But just mix it until everything is well combined. Again, you don't want to mix this too, too much. All right, that looks well enough. Just gonna take it now. I'm gonna set this right here. This makes quite a bit, as you can see. And even though there's just two of us tonight for dinner, I always end up making the whole thing because it stays really lovely in the fridge for a few days. And like I said, there's nothing better than a meatloaf sandwich. Trust me, it's pretty darn delightful. All right, shape this into a nice loaf. You want it to be a, a couple inches high. That's about a couple inches, I'd say. And about, I would say, four inches wide. All right, that looks lovely. I'm gonna wash up, set this aside for a few minutes, and then we'll get going on to making the glaze. Now, to make the glaze, it's super, super simple and easy. You're gonna start with some plain old ketchup. I know this sounds odd, and it's certainly not what I would top an Italian meatloaf with, but for a traditional classic American meatloaf, I think my husband would head right over to divorce court if it didn't have a brown sugar ketchup glaze on top. I'm just saying. All right, now to that, I'm gonna add in some brown sugar. And then you've got your paprika, your garlic, mustard, onion, flavor galore right in there. Then, my special little touch, I like to add just a little bit of, t of uh, tomato paste. I feel like the tomato paste just cuts the sweetness a bit and adding a little bit of body to it. If you don't want to add it though, leave it out. It's totally fine. That's good. That's Alrighty, let's give this a good mix. And that, my friend, is your super simple glaze. Doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. Give that a good mix in. You know what? I'm gonna put some black pepper in there too. Why not? Good amount of black pepper. Alrighty. Okay, now I'm just gonna take half of this for now. I'm just gonna use half. That'll do me just fine. Smear it evenly over the top. If a little bit falls on the sides, that's completely fine by me. I just wanna make sure the top is covered. All right, this looks gorgeous. I'm gonna put this into the oven that's been preheating at, it's been preheated at 350 and I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna leave it in there for 50 minutes and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like once it's there and move on to the next and final step. I made loaf has been in the oven for 50 minutes and now I'm just going to pour over the remaining glaze. Now if this is way too much for you, by all means just cut the glaze in half, but I really like it. All right, so smear it well. That looks great. I'm gonna pop this back in for 20 more minutes and then let it cool a bit and we'll get ready. Then we'll be ready to get it sliced. My meatloaf baked for another 20 minutes and I've let it cool for about 10 minutes, almost 10 minutes, just enough to handle so I'm gonna burn my mouth. And also you want, always want meat to rest so that the juices can redistribute and it don't kind of fly out as soon as you go and cut it. All right. 
Let's cut into this baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, please. Right here at my plate is where you belong, my friend. Oh. Mmm. Oh, no, I like to eat so much. That is incredibly moist, super flavorful. That glaze has got such an attitude. I don't even know how. I, I, I don't even know what to do with myself. By the way, that would be good on anything: chicken thighs, ham, whatever. It's just really, really delicious. Of course, it's perfect on meatloaf. I'm gonna go in for another bite or ten. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Go to Laura in the Kitchen. Come and get this recipe, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.